Do you know what's amazing about Malaysia? It's the fantastic mix of cultures we have around us. But what's even more amazing is that all these cultures coexist in harmony. You can even see it in the food we eat, like a certain dish that perfectly represents this amazing mix. But it's not something you can just describe. So I'm going to experience the true goodness of Nasi Kanda. I'm late. I'm late for my nasi kanda. Pinangites are heavyweight eaters. It's proven by the fact that almost half the population has nasi kanda for breakfast. One of the oldest, most legendary kanda joints is Ali Amir, which was actually sold street to street using kanda poles before they opened up shop. And one man has been part of the whole evolution. We went back before World War II. Last time, kedai kurang. Indian Muslim, they like to cook. So, mereka suka menega. So, last time in Penang, as I know, the main port untuk menega nasi ini, eh, dekat uh, Penang port. Okay. Mereka nak masak kat situ tak boleh. So, they have to masak one place. So, nak bawa pergi ke sana, nak bawa pakai apa? So, the, so that pole came about? The pole, about. they create. Dia pakai pole tu, bawa kandak pergi. From that, they get the name nasi kandak. So, okay, actually, it's more like home delivery system. Yeah. Actually, it's a home delivery system. It's been done before pre Exactly. By, yeah. us, by, by us. By us, it's actually done already. It's almost time to face my heavy duty breakfast. But before that, I get to prepare myself with some light kanda pole training. Now, if you're going to eat with your eyes over here, you would say that it's very spartan because everything seems to be very bleak and one tone color. Then you smell it, right? And you start to go like, okay, what is going on over here, man? Because I am absolutely loving the notes that are coming out of my nose. There is no chance here for you to taste things individually. You literally have to just dive straight in for the for the kill. Oh, good morning, tonight. Oh, it's so good. I mean, it's light. It doesn't hit you like that, it's more like it spreads out on you and I think that's just gorgeous. Now, mind you, I've been blessed with everything on my plate. Yeah? I've been given some, right, beef, rendang. I'm gonna spread this out. It's not about having the, the single taste of one thing. It is about the mix. But I'm just surprised how a mixture of stuff can still taste so relaxed. This actually is so good. Yeah. Try some of that dugging. Got some tender stuff right there. Finally the chicken. Now they are very generous with the portions here. Look at that. The, uh, the sauce is a bit different, huh? Very different. You mix it all up with this, which is what you do la. Oh yeah. Well cooked, white meat. The kanda is a bit more spicy, filling it down the throat now. Can I get some rice with the side of my curry? Fine liquids, you know. The fact that it is a tradition, and I love the fact that you can still see people here every day whacking this right smack in the morning like it's second nature. That is the tradition that we should not lose. This is our national heritage. And nothing says best in the world better than the burst of flavors that hits you and makes you go, ah, now it's time to go back to sleep. Hmm. I'm here at this late hour to catch one of the rarest food nominons ever. Now, like the Halley's Comet, the Midsummer Night Sun and the Lunar Eclipse. This thing only happens between the magic hours of 11 p.m. till 1 a.m. in the morning. And I am almost at the spot where I can catch a glimpse of it. And there it is. 
So, here's a guide to catch this wonder. You've got to join the queue and wait for the blue light to turn on. Then, if you're lucky, you get to reach the front and pick anything on offer. When the blue light is off, you'll either miss it or you'll end the night with a full, satisfied tummy. So, let's get the satisfaction going on. First things first, I don't know where to begin, you know what I mean? Um, let's go for the rice then. Oh, I love it. Look, okay. The texture of this rice, right, is so fluffy and compact. It's um, it's like when they packed it in, there was no air left. Um, it's got a very strong taste of nasi tomato. Though it doesn't look it, it looks very... um. Oh, man. It's lightly coloured, but you know the flavours in there. You, 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 you can taste the tomato, but not an overpowering sense. It's sort of like a base. Let's mix it all up, man. It's got to be in the way they cook it. Wait. It's gorge, man. Now, this is what you call the sotong power, yeah? Look at that. I'm just gonna pull it out like strips, right? Like you got yourself a strip here. You chew into it. It's stringy. It's chewy. And it retains all that juice from the squid in there. Mixed with that lovely sambal and when you squeeze it, chew it each time, just bursts of flavours come out in your mouth. Eat that with rice. You got a winner, man. Next up, this is your chicken. I was recommended this personally, fried chicken up. You know me, I'm the chicken man and I ain't afraid. This is gonna be great. Um, power, bro. Power, duh. You can either make it or you can break it. And these guys, know how to make it. I bet it's white, they're one of their best sellers. Everybody here seems to be going for the ayam goreng. Ayam goreng, bro. Ayam goreng. Good. This combo of the, uh, the sambal, the ayam masak kicap, and the ayam masak merah. So good. For a few hours at night, this whole area suddenly comes alive like it's lunch hour. And it truly is a phenomenon because every single thing here is extraordinary. You know, to me it's like a... such magic that it's like a musical symphony. The guys in there are orchestrating like a... a beautiful piece of music for you to just enjoy. And... man... every night, the tickets are sold out. This is one concert you do not want to miss. Best in the world, man. Serious best. I feel blessed to be able to experience this sensation. And I feel it has brought me even closer to food. In fact, I'd like to explore a certain delicious prophecy. It's so senpoi. There's nothing special to it. This is the first time I actually feel that we've put ourselves in actual danger to uncover something for best in the world. In Talo Intan, there's a location that receives a congregation of people from far and wide. They come here for one thing only, the food. And they believe that its deliciousness is the truth. So I've come to test my faith in the nasi kanda of M. Gulam Rasul. This looks brilliant. Eh? It's so senpoi. There's nothing special to it. It's just rice, kuah, a lot of meat. They've got a very special type of sambal. It's sweet, it's sour. I bet it goes great with everything here. We've got kambing. Oh, look at that. It's smoking, man. The aromas on that is phenomenal. We've got some ayam masak mera. Not smoking, but luscious. Oh. And finally, we got the ayam goreng, which is a must. But before that, as all true nasi kanda spirits go, you have to dig in straight to the rice. Oh, it's fantastic, man. It's blowing my mind. Before we move on, I must try this ayam goreng because, you know, this is the way forward, right? This ayam goreng that I'm eating has been tasted far and wide in the land of Malaysia. 
Mm, still hot, very nice and luscious in the middle. And when you mix it with the nasi, ini betul-betul nasi kanda. You cannot say anything anymore. This is the one. The rumpa that they use, you know, the spices that, that they use to fry the chicken with is just phenomenal. Now I'm going to head on to the um, ayam masak merah. The sauce is just brilliant, man. What an emotional experience. I love lamb. I've taken off some of this, but I'm not interested in that. We go straight to the bone. No mistake, this is the one. MGR's food has lived up to the expectation. The texture of the kambing, man. It's soft, it's hot. It's this is absolutely delicious. I've spoken a lot with my friends from all over the world, and one thing they don't understand about Malaysian food is how can you mix all that? How can you decipher this taste? You know, and I'm like, guys, I know what you mean. I too like to take things as it is, but this entire country was built on a mix of different flavors. And if we don't eat that mix every single day, then what are we? I mean, we are what we eat, right? There you have it, the treasure is uncovered. These guys here started selling under a tree. And for it to become so huge and have so much variety, you know it has to be best in the world. In this small town of Kandar, it's a shame. I heard that there is another sheriff in this town. Well, I think I'd like y'all to know that there's only space for one sheriff in this town. And that's me. I'm gonna have to eat you alive. So, um, are you recording? Okay. We came here to uh, chew out the other sheriff, but, um, I came here and I had a second look and I'm actually quite scared of the sheriff right now. Well, a bunch of people have, have tried to talk him out of it, but uh, I don't think he really wants to have the uh, place covered, so we decided to do this. As guerrilla and discreetly as possible. A TV host one? Uh, yes, I am. Shh, don't tell anybody. My, my son is a favorite of you. Oh, uh, thanks. Oh, well, that's really nice. Right. Thanks, Steven. There, as if. Tell your oh, son I said you. hello. That was a fantastic moment. Okay, back to my mission. Gotta steal myself and confront this sheriff. Keep calm, Raz. Relax. He's glaring at the camera, not at you. Okay, got it. Let's get out of here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. This is the first time I actually feel that we've put ourselves in actual danger to uncover something for best in the world, okay? I don't think I'll ever be able to buy this ever again. So, I'm just going to eat this one time with you guys and uh, enjoy it for what it is. It's getting a little too heated in this town, so I head off into the sunset to find a safe, faraway place where I can enjoy my bounty. Finally, man. I didn't realize that this entire thing would be like a huge drama, you know, like a feat. Oh. Oh. Before I begin, I'm going to say to the crew, I'm sorry that you guys are not going to get this because um, there's only one packet and I'm going to tell you what it's like. So, okay. Okay, it's not as banje as most nasi kandar we had. See, there's still remnants of rice there. I'm going to whack it all together, get your hands all dirty and stuff. The gravy is so thick, it's able to like retain like really nice sticky flavours to the rice. It's sweet, spicy, <clears throat> hits you at the throat nicely. That's the way forward. Got some squid here. I can vouch for its freshness. It's good. And it's great man, it's dry. See, everything sort of absorbs into the rice. I will never know now, or I suppose ever, what each dish tastes like individually. But um, tell you what, the mix is pretty phenomenal. Now, of course, I have saved the best for last. And that is the ayam roast. 
Oh, mm. well, it's like a hybrid of some sort of masak merah with masak madu slash masak something awesome lah. You know what I mean? Mm. But the combi, uh, it's massive. Question is right now, would I dare go back for another one of these? I think if you master up the courage and just say, listen, man, I'm sorry. I had to let the world know how beautiful this is because that's what everybody has been saying. Fact is, he's been around for so long. I don't know what his history is. I don't know where he comes from. But all I know is two things. There is a line every day from 5 p.m. to about 9 p.m. at night when he's done and that's it. And secondly, I've eaten it and I'm going to testify that it is bestest of bestest. I know in the beginning of this thing, we all felt really confident about taking on the sheriff, you know, eating it up. Yeah, well, I'm eating it up. But um, if there's a reason for it to be one sheriff in this town, then you're the sheriff. I just want to go to jail and eat this up. Everything I put myself through was worth it. That was pure gold. I have to put my hands up and say, undeniably best in the world. Now, let's run for the border. This is my formation. Five, four, two. With the telo. Meat, awesome. Fat, double awesome. Run. Yeah. Come, come in. As you can see, I'm sitting down in the middle of a padang. Now, if I was a cow or a herbivore, this would present itself to be some wonderful leafy goodness. But for some people, like the Klantanese, they like their padang in a slightly different way. Restaurant Hoover came about when a man from Indonesia sailed across the sea and made his home in Klantan. Here, he introduced the nasi padang concept, which gained so much popularity amongst the locals, it has now become a staple. This padang, for example. As you can see, this is the hidang style. That means all your players turun padang. This is my formation. Five, four, two. With the telo. And now, it's time to eat. So, striker passes the ball over to my first striker. Oh. Man, good stuff. It's not exactly hari curry. Very interesting flavour. I think it's slightly different from nasi padang as well. Like, it's so light, I can, I can probably finish it in one sitting. And it's very pleasant as well. It's like, mmm, you know what I mean? And the fact is they use um, ayam kampung, which is, you know, very lean meat and not much fat on that. Fantastic. Okay, let's go for another very famous thing over here. Apparently, everybody goes for it. And that's the daging rendang. Oh. Okay, it's sweet. It's Kelantan sweet. But I'll tell you what, 90% of rendangs I've eaten in my life, their gravy is quite, um, you know, thick. I mean, of course, you look at it and it's kind of thick on the top, right? But that's just the top layer. When you reach the bottom, it's all just water with colouring. But it's not colouring, it's the colour of the taste. The fact that you can still achieve a very strong taste with it and get everything absorbed into the meat that you're taking, whether it's chicken, it's fish, whatever, man. Mm. All right, next stop. Deep fried solo ikan. Look at that. This is shaved coconut, like, you know, whatever shavings you get inside an old coconut. And then they mix it with uh, ikan kembung. Oh my god. If you know solo, you know solo, okay? This solo is awesome. It's sweet, coconutty, good savoury taste. A very natural one. Finally, the moment we have been waiting for. Look at that. A giant prawn. I'm gonna let it drip for a while onto my plate. Give it a bit of a back stretch. <laughs> you know. We're gonna eat now. Crunches! Crunches! He's doing more than I should. The prawn is all peeled. Now, the moment of truth. Massive flavours in them. 
What's amazing about this is that even though it came from Sumatra, everything here has a very distinct Plantanese taste. It's become a gorgeous mix of the two cultures. But that's not the most beautiful thing. The most beautiful thing about it is that although it's different, it is the northeastern sort of nasi kanda as delight, if you know what I mean. So if you're ever in Klate, come over here and try it out. Best in the world. Restaurant Miria in Kota Baru seems like a normal by-the-road restaurant you find anywhere. But this is no ordinary place. This is where you come for a dish that would only normally exist in your wildest dreams. Giggity. I dream a dream of a fluffy roti chanai that comes with a side of some beautiful curry gravy that comes with bits of meat attached to a gearbox the size of a 12-ton lorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, for most of you out there, you're probably thinking, are you crazy? Crazy is only as crazy does. So what crazy is going to do is to attempt to finish this gearbox. <laughs> All right, this is how we roll, bro. This is how we roll. It's um, it's absolutely delicious. I knew I left this here for a reason. I'm just gonna like leave this aside because this is not the star. So yeah, where do I begin? Just sort of like trying to cut off bits and pieces of of cartilage and meat. And look at that gorgeous stuff. Meat, awesome. Cutlage, awesome fat, double awesome. That's a foursome! Ah! I told you it's my wildest dreams. Ah, it's a foursome because it's four awesome. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um. <laughs> Warning, this is being attempted by a Blaha professional. If you don't have a strong stomach, do not try this alone. And make sure you have the perfect napkin to wipe off all the mess. Now, we're going to hit the bone marrow, okay? And selamat datang ke rancangan Marrow D. Ya, dan di sini kami ada bone marrow yang terlalu banyak dalam tulang yang besar ni. Yeah. Kena sedut, sedut, sedut. Ah, dan, <laughs> itu dia. Dan kita tahu ada gossip di dalam marrow ini. Macam sedap ke tak? Creamy, richness, taste. Straight to your head. Craziness, awesome. I love it. So guys, if you have barbaric tendencies for a really big midnight snack, you gotta come here and sort yourself out with a nice roti chanai and a massive piece of meat stuck on a crazy big bone. Because this stuff here definitely deserves to be in our national treasure books as one of the most redonkulously crazy good stuff that you need to try. Best in the world, man. And the marrow? <laughs> Never ends. Melody! Yeah! And that brings me to the end of my journey. It's been a deliciously long one, and I've tasted so many different varieties and distinct flavors from the traditional, modern, plain, bizarre to simply out of this world. Everywhere I've traveled has provided me with unique experiences and stories that translate itself into the food. However, what has been constant amongst all the precious stones in our box of national treasures is how gloriously good they all taste. Enough said. Our food is best in the world. Legit! Legit.